I'm going to begin uh, just by saying, I mean, obviously we, in, we have this inclination as kind of in, in cinema and storytellers to create this big, bold movie, sometimes in fantasy uh, formats or science fiction, but there's nothing really better, is there? They're kind of just sort of a complex love story in, in, in film. That seems to be, at least for me, what I, I'm most attracted to in cinema. Yeah. Well, this one is a funny one because it felt, you know, thinking of it and writing it, it felt like a kind of two-hander, very intimate chamber piece, you know, and uh, when you actually start, start to imagine how it's the world it, it involves, you know, it's actually a huge epic story, you know, so as a, as a everyone, you know, and the financiers and producers read the script and said, oh, it's lovely, it's these two, three, four characters. And then they say, oh, God, there's all this stuff, East Berlin, there's uh, Paris, there's, you know, it's going to be a... So it's a strange and intimate tale told in a very big, uh, <laughs> big, big world. Um, it was quite a, quite a challenge. Yeah, cause I mean, it's sort of gloriously cinematic, but at the same time steeped in realism, because obviously it's dedicated to your parents. And I gather you took quite a lot of inspiration from, from them as well. Yeah, but that's not where the realism comes from. I mean, the, the realist version would be really boring and, uh, and convoluted and very long. I mean, they lived for a long time and there's a lot, of, lot more twists and turns in their lives. So I took a couple like them. In fact, I gave them my parents' names to just to kind of keep the focus. And the mechanics of the relationship were there, this kind of... Not being able to be together when things are good, when, and then you know, falling apart. Not being able to be living uh, apart from each other, changing countries, changing partners, getting back together again. All that is, you know, that, that's sort of inspired by my parents. But this couple is has a life of its own. So, and it's not that realistic. It's it's actually quite a quite a big melodrama when you think about it. But it's got some kind of realist details here and there just to make the audience happy. Yeah. I, mean, the, I mean, the characters go on such a remarkable journey. We see them develop so much across the course of the movie. I was wondering, did you shoot chronologically? Because it, it felt, because it was, the, the way we saw the, the acting mm -hmm. performances and the way their characters sort of changed across the course of the movie, it felt like it might have been shot That's chronologically. That's great, it's great. We couldn't afford to shoot it chronologically, <laughs> but we shot it with breaks because we needed breaks for the changing seasons and for moving the the film crew, you know, we had so many locations. In Poland itself, we had maybe nine different locations, you know, so there was a lot of, like, breaks and going somewhere. Then there was a break for Paris, where we shot four days in Croatia. So in these breaks, you know, you could sort of work with the actors a bit more. There was a, t you know, uh, uh, there's a possibility to break off and you know, regroup a little bit and rewrite a little bit. Uh, so, you know, there was a certain control over these jumps in time. But unfortunately, it wasn't chronological. I mean, so, I mean, the jumps in time, obviously the structure of it, you do leave quite big kind of gaps. So I was wondering, because yeah. I mean, obviously you let the audience kind of fill in those little moments. I mean, do, is that, do you quite like giving the audience that sense of, of freedom? Because in some yeah. ways we create our own story. In, in, well, that's the idea. I didn't, I wasn't entirely sure it would work, you know. It was just a bit of a shot in the dark. But there was no other way I could do it because I didn't want to have all these, like in biopics, you have all these kind of scenes which explain why this led to this and, you know, the kind of from getting from A to B. And I find that really, really, really kind of dead cinema, you know, and a lot of dialogue that needs to explain, you know, why people do what they do. So I just wanted to make a film that I'd like to see, you know, where we just get to the, get to the, the, the get to the, cut to the chase, you know, get to the really good scenes, emotionally, visually, you know, make them really work. And hopefully the audience will fill in all the, missing links, but I wasn't entirely sure uh, that would 100% work. And seeing the reactions of the audiences, I'm really more than, you know, happy. <laughs> is, that, is that just how it works is that as a director? Do you just make movies that you would like to see? Is that exactly. Kind of, that's yeah. the only criterion. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no... And that's the best criterion because, you know, I'm not, I'm not such a weirdo, you know, I don't have oh, a taste that's just my own, you know. Obviously, there's, you know, quite a few people like me. But, but, you know, when you shoot it, when you write it, when you shoot it, you just think, do I like it? Do I really like it? Do I like them? Do I like this moment? Do I like this scene? Do I like this image? You know, do I like this song? And in the end, it's the only criterion is, do I like it? You know, does it turn me on? Is it, is it expressive? Is it strong? You know, yeah. And obviously the core relationship to this is, is, is everything. I was wondering, in regards to the casting of, of Joanna and Thomas, I mean, was, was, did you have to screen test them together or, did you, or were you able just to, to know instinctively that this is, this is a coupling that would no, work? No, I screen tested them a bit. I tried some scenes. I mean, Joanna, uh, I kind of knew from previous films, you know, I'd already cast her, uh, for, you know, in a couple of other films. She was in Ida, she was this pop singer in, in my previous film. Uh, so I knew when I was kind of writing and imagining the film, I, I thought of her. I could, I could see that she can do it. In fact, I was kind of even, even kind of mm, like uh, writing some stuff for her, you know. 
Having said that, I still kept looking for other actresses, you know, because the, the heroine was supposed to be a bit younger at the beginning of the film. But, um, but, but I knew she's there, I knew she's number one, and, um, and so on. With, with Tomáš, I was kind of hoping to find a musician who, can, who really plays the piano brilliantly and uh, so on. It was difficult to combine the act, you know, an actor and a musician. Uh, but Tomáš was, uh, was, was, was great, you know, he had the kind of the right look. Uh, I had to test him with, with Jana, uh, and it took some testing, it took quite a few, because they're both, you know, they're both very strong characters in their own way. They, they're not actors who will do anything for the, for the part, you know, you have to really convince them that, um, that this needs to be done. And, uh, and they're both sensitive souls, you know, so it took a bit of time to kind of get them to... To, 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 you know, to, to be good together, to, for the chemistry to arise. It was a process. So, yeah, it was, everything was a process, you know. It, it, took, it took like a year to prepare the film, you know, and locations, like casting, everything. Because, I mean, the second it finished, I mean, it just instantly felt like we just witnessed a real kind of like, sort of, uh, a, a, almost a famous um, cinematic relationship. The, the two of them have Great. this kind of yeah. chemistry together. I was just wondering, what, what's your favourite ever kind of romantic pairing on screen? Did you have one in mind oh, for this? Or oh. No, I didn't have for this, but I, I kind of, you know, I, I did love films, you know, like Casablanca. Yeah. <laughs> so of course, you know, I mean, somewhere there, it's uh, and, and and you know, Lauren Bacall and uh, Humphrey Bogart type of, you know. In fact, in some scenes when I was working with Joanna, I showed showed her uh, clips from um, with Lauren Bacall, you know, because you know, for that kind of slightly restrained sardonic delivery, you know, which Jana is not her natural, I mean, she's a very kind of warm, spontaneous person, you know, so that kind of withheld and slight smile around the eyes and there's this sardonic delivery was something that need, needed to be, you know, acquired. So, so yeah, that couple, great, you know, the Bacal and, uh, and, and, um, and Humphrey Bogart, yeah, it was definitely one of those. Because I mean, obviously, I mean, because it does combine real kind of classic Hollywood elements with this kind of quite bleak Cold War kind of aesthetic. Was that yeah. quite a challenge to to have to have both sort of to have the to kind of have the film steeped in kind of its European roots and at the same mm -hmm. time be very American in some ways without compromising well, it the wasn't, other? It didn't feel like challenge, you know. I was just doing what I like, <laughs> what I wanted to see on screen. So it wasn't there was no. Uh, Oh, I want to do a Hollywood film, but I want to do yeah. a miserable black and white Polish film. No, no, it was like this. This is exactly the film I wanted to do, and I mean, you know, I mean, they're romantic couples everywhere. You know, it just didn't, it doesn't need Hollywood film. I mean, my, my parents were the ultimate bloody romantic couple, you know. So, uh, so, so yeah, I had all sorts of um, um, uh, like models for it, and, and there was no there was no challenge. The challenge was just to make a film, you know. Like, yeah. It's uh, and survive it, you know. Was, and do you think this, this story could work now? I mean, relationships seem so different now. To there was something more sort of pure and si almost simple about yeah. this relationship. Do you, do you think now it, it could you could tell a story quite like I this in the modern so. day? I don't think so. It would be a challenge. I mean, nowadays with everyone like looking, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to imagine people looking at each other and kind of falling in love. You know, they check each other out on the on the on the phone and, and obstacles are not so, I mean, these great obstacles did help, you know, of course, you know, crossing borders and not being able to cross borders and at least in the West, you know, we don't have these obstacles. But above all, this kind of, this ability to see across the room and see somebody uh, and respond and, and, you know, and yearn without having, without being able to communicate and send a little heart <laughs> by phone, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine it these days. Of course, I mean, obviously, you're, this and, and I do as well, you've sort of reverted back to, to Polish language cinema. Well. Mm -hmm. Usually it's almost the other way around. People sort of begin in their, in their sort of mother tongue and then eventually yeah. they, they move over and do sort of English language. But you've yeah. sort of done it the other, the other way around. Was that always yeah. the kind of idea in your mind? Did no, you ever, I just think? used to live in Britain, you know, for, yeah. for a long time. So I, you know, I lived here, my kids were growing up here, so I was making films here. But, but with age, I started, um, you know, when the kids left the, ha the house. <laughs> Left home, I you know I started thinking, oh, what what is it I really want this, these stories I really want to tell, you know, and they tended to be uh, stories from the past, to do, you know, to do with my the world of my childhood, the world of my parents, you know, some kind of, and also it's a kind of slightly rejection of the world that surrounds us, you know. I mean, it's it's uh, this this world of com instant communi instant communication, and uh, for a world that's a little bit more. Um, um, you know, spare and thoughtful and romantic. You know, and and for prob you know for people who have real, real problems. You know, rather than 
imagined ones. <laughs> yeah, I find the older I get, the more I think back to my own roots and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, and wait till you're my age. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so just very finally, uh, Limonov obviously is next. Uh, May, yeah, I mean, potentially. We'll see, potentially yeah. uh, I mean, but I'm um, just wondering about that. I mean, that's going to be quite a, a, a very interesting one to cast. Have you, yeah. Has that process sort of started yeah, yet? Yeah, I've been looking for, uh, for the right actor, you know, perhaps somebody in mind, maybe. Again, it's a... It's a. It's not a biopic, you know. It's a kind of very elliptically told film. It's not. Ex it's not cheap. It's not very commercial. I mean, this doesn't seem commercial either. So you know, you never know what's commercial these days. But, but, uh, but it's a big challenge, and I'd, I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> it's a huge thing if it if it works. You know. Brilliant. I hope you have been to interviewing that in about three years' time. Wasn't it? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So that's the rhythm. Three years. Yeah. So. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!